everybody's annoyed by that 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 Segura stuff, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm just disconnected and over it. I don't give a fuck to be honest. He's always been like that. He's always been a bit of a cunt. Now he's got a bit of money in his pocket. It's kind of maybe validated him a little bit, but he's always been like this. Even when he was fat and quote unquote broker or poor, he was always like this. I'm surprised people are only clocking onto it. Like I never really un- I'm, I might sound like a simp because everyone always like, oh, you sound like a simp because you're backing them. But I never enjoyed the Garth Brooks troll. I've got to be honest. Yeah, he's a bit weird. I understand. But going into his comments and trolling him and spamming, I never enjoyed that troll, personally. I didn't like it. Going to his shows and bringing signs up and this, like, it didn't sit right with me. I thought that was a bit weird to be fair, personally for me, again, I could be in the wrong, you guys could think I'm a bit of a pussy, and I'm being a simp, and oh, whatever, but I didn't like the Garth Brooks thing, personally, I didn't, I didn't like it, I think it was weird, but, hey, what do I know? Five minutes later. <sighs> okay, I think I changed my mind, Tom's a piece of shit, I agree now, Tom's a fucking piece of shit. Tom is a fucking piece of shit and I don't know how his fans put up with this shit. Big up my guy podcast cringe. New video alert here titled Tom Segura goes for Karen. Let's see what he has to say about this. If you're if you're still mad about this, just know that it's your mindset and you're thinking <laughs> I said Tom used to look like the lasagna girl. <laughs> but I was still finding ways to sneak food and eat the way that I wanted. And so I put on another hundred pounds in the next five years. And I was around 250 when I was 13. And when it got like that was when my mom started to really point out my size. <laughs> Tom has that personality of the person who, when they start CrossFit, they just become insufferable. You know, you know that person. They get into CrossFit, they get into triathlons, Ironmans. It's just like, shut the fuck up, bro. Like, leave me alone. Not everything is a fucking murph. Do you know what I mean? Like, fuck off. Like, <laughs> like a f-ing loser. But you don't have to. You don't. You can change the way you think. But you have to accept the way you're thinking right now is not going to get you anywhere. You're being bitter. You're being petty. You're insecure. You're not confident. And you can change that. But you have to be proactive. If you just sit around and you, mm, you know what? You only have what you have because of fans. So don't talk about us like that. Yeah, but you're still a loser if you're thinking like that. <laughs> so you're maybe, uh, I'm lucky to have you as a loser fan, but <laughs> you don't have to be that way. You could be a winner, you know? I'm sorry, but I love that rant because I know every comedian probably feels the same way. They despise their fans. They just tolerate them for what it is, but they fucking despise their fucking fans. You just got to change the way you think. What's up, losers? Welcome back to another video. Shout out to all you poor people out there doing it tough. Remember to stop making excuses and change your attitude. It's the only way. And speaking of doing it tough, our boy Tom Segura, well, he's having a rough time, it seems. He was at the airport and uh, why don't we just let him explain it for us? Dumb c- from American Air made me gate check my bag so she feels the little power she has in her life. Jesus I get it. You win this round. C- Some get mad when people vent online at their airline frustrations, but honestly, it's a healthy outlet. Think of the alternatives. Writing is probably the best option. You get the emotions out, get some validation, and you can fantasize that old c- face sees what you wrote. So then American Airlines responded and replied to Tom saying, We know you're no rookie, Tom, and you know how to pack a bag. We're sorry for the hassle today. To which he replied, This is a psychological tactic that well-trained people across all businesses use because it's effective. They empathize with the customer's emotion. Typically, people feel seen and heard and immediately calm down after this acknowledgement. I still wish awful things <laughs> on gate agent. That's, that's this funny. is where you can kind of tell that Tom's being serious. He's not joking around. He might be a little bit, but to analyze their reply like that and lead into it, he's not kidding. Do you think so? I thought that was just a funny joke. Do you agree with Podcast Cringe that he was being sinister and he was like on go mode? I thought that was just a really funny joke. Hmm. So then to conclude all of this, 
He tied it all up nicely with, Lesson learned to forgive is the highest, most beautiful form of love. In return, you will receive untold peace and happiness. I want you to know I forgive the gate agent that behaved like a child in order to feel like a boss, and I hope the next passenger does too. To which one of his fans replied, this is one of the gayest things I've ever read on Twitter. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So then, speaking of replies, Tom actually took the time out of his super busy celebrity schedule to engage with people on Twitter. Weird, huh? For someone who's so busy. True. And he made it crystal clear how he thinks about this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, your whining sounds like she made the right call. Minor inconveniences are the horror. You sound like an airline employee. I'm surprised no one told him you should work harder to make more money so you don't have to wait in line with us pause or something along those lines. I'm surprised no one gave him that report, gave him that um, retort or pushback. Why don't you just like work harder and make more so you can not be here with us because you don't think much of us. You know what I mean, I'm surprised. Maybe they did. Who knows? Should have been on a private jet, Tommy. Your fault for interacting with pause. <laughs> yep. Exactly. You sound pretty ego-driven and entitled from this post, Tom. You've been losing touch lately with your fan base, can't even relate with what you say anymore. That's what making too much money does to people, I guess. To which Tom <laughs> replied, Oh, wow. Thanks for your cool <laughs> insight. I'd sure hate to lose touch with dumps who can't relate to a bag check at the airport. Have fun on the choo-choo, bud. That's one of the things I've always been fascinated when it comes to stand-up comedians. They have a they they're very good at pretending to be not even working class but like the everyman. Rogan's a good example of it. Even though he's been a multi-millionaire close to a billionaire for the majority of his adult life, he's probably been rich more in for more years than he's been poor. He still seems like the regular guy type of thing, right? And people kind of like that, which is probably a part, in part why he's so popular. But I wonder how they do that. Is it just by wearing that regular guy clothes? Like not having designer clothes, not having crazy watches. not Because a lot of these comedians, with the exception of maybe Bert and a few of them, they don't really post about their cars. They don't post crazy stuff about their houses. They kind of keep themselves kind of modest online. They don't really let it be known what they have. So people kind of feel like they are just like them when they're not. They're super rich. But for some reason, some of them f think, fuck that. I'm the rich guy. You guys are the peasants. You're my fucking fans. I don't, you know what I mean? Like there's something in it. I wonder how they do that. And I also wonder why people believe them because they're not regular guys. None of these guys, for the most part, the majority of them haven't even had a regular job their entire adult life. They've all been doing fun entertainment type shit. So, um, yeah, interesting to me. Oof, that one was brutal. Some hard truths right there. I mean, even though that's kind of mean, the truth can be like that. Yeah, exactly. I said, Rogan talks about delivering papers in the 70s like he was like he fought in Vietnam. <laughs> Rogan longs with t shirts, Joe wears dress hoodies like, home, like the homeless. <laughs> <laughs> real down to earth D Drogan's like the closer my the closer the hem of my hoodie is to the ground the more relatable I am <laughs> the longer my sleeves are <laughs> the more down to earth I am <laughs> Rogan dresses fucking crazy bro he doesn't have Rogan's a nearly a billionaire. He doesn't have one suit that fits him properly. You can't even get one suit tailored properly. He wears these fucking like moss bros fucking higher suits that you wear to weddings and funerals and shit. Like you know what I mean, just like with the fucking crazy shoulders. Like the ones that you wear for the first like you only get your first office job or you go to a job interview and your dad gives you his blazer or your uncle or you get it from a fucking charity shop. It's just like <laughs> you walk in. <laughs> And you have that walk of somebody that's never worn a blazer. You know, when you first wear a blazer, it's a bit uncomfortable to wear. You're not really comfortable in it. You're not really loose, you know? You kind of look like somebody that doesn't wear a blazer. That's how fucking Rogan looks. He looks like, no, he looks like kids when they dress up in their dad's clothes, you know? Oh, fucking Rogan, man. Right. And I've also got a theory. Maybe I'm a bit, maybe I'm, maybe it's my tism kicking him. Is it me or does it look like Rogan purposely wears shoes 
bigger than his foot size. I think Rogan's got a bit of an insecurity about how big his feet are. I feel like he wears shoes bigger than his actual foot size. So he might be a US 9, but he wears like a US 11. Keep an eye out for it. When you see a picture of Rogan's feet, look at it and think of me. I think Rogan purposely wears shoes two sizes bigger than his foot size. <laughs> but this one here, this one got me good. Tom absolutely roasted old cowboy over here who said Tom sounds like a pre-Madonna. I think he meant to say pre-Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> which is a very temperamental person with an inflated view of their own talent or importance. And even though that perfectly describes Tom and his buddy, Bert, that guy really did walk into that one. Nice work, Tom. That one was actually funny. And then there were the people who supported what Tom said and did. There's obviously going to be people on both sides here. She's still a poor though. Possibly lots on here though. <laughs> Y'all, it's not about him being inconvenienced by checking his bag it's about the larger issue here, <laughs> flight attendants who get off and telling people what to do just because they say so. Uh, that wasn't a flight attendant though, it was an agent, but anyway. So Tom replied, and zero consistency. They're boarding people with the same bag, such nonsense. They literally said, we need room for all the bags. I'm flying with one roller bag, that's it. Isn't this also, to be honest, forget all the Tom being, you know, disrespectful and whatnot. Isn't this also really hacky? I just thought about it now. Isn't this like the antithesis of hacky stand-up comedy material? Like airport stuff, no? Like, who gives a fuck? Everyone gets delayed at the airports. So that train station is the, it's the most basic, normy, hacky, shitty co comedy ever, right? Like, what is this, man? Surely you should have a bit more like, shame and pride in your work not to kind of bring up not to even talk about it sort of stuff because it's, everybody has the same issue just get on with it airports are annoying Every, anywhere you go unless you're fucking flying on qatari airlines most airports and most airlines are fucking annoying it just is what it is you put up with it because you have no other choice like what is this stuff man you're not the only person that's had an inconvenience when it comes to their luggage on the fucking plane it's not that big of a deal Imagine me as a grown-up tweeting a fucking airline on social media, thinking I'm telling them something. I'm never going to fly with you guys again. They're like, yeah, all right, cool. <laughs> we don't give a fuck. Now, if you're wondering where all of this came from, it's actually been a slow build-up for Tom. He's talked about the inconsistency a couple of times. Back in 2021, he called out this exact situation on his podcast. One time I go through and I was... I was fired up that day and um, somebody told me, I don't know, probably something they're supposed to tell me, but I was like, go, f you know, I was just like not having it. <laughs> and so I walk through because they're, like there's it's very like, um, you know, it's not consistent. I feel like. Right. Not at there's all. no there's not. Consi that's the part that's like very upsetting sometimes is like you can't bring that backpack through. Like, I fly with this every week. I don't care if you fly with it every week. And I'm like. It's definitely okay to put this through. And like, mm -mm. I'm like, oh, okay. So, you know, we're having our back and forth. Like, well, it's going through the machine. Go, you check it out, right? And then I walk through and I see. That's the, I wish I could have that level of fucking assuredness. That is such a Karen attitude, isn't it? That fucking just, I'm, I'm, I, no, it's my right. It's like, these are the type of people that you hated when you used to work retail or worked in a bar. These type of people, this type of personality, this kind of entitlement, like everything revolves around them. So yuck. Like six of them get in a huddle and just start conversing like about their day. Yeah, right? yeah. And I'm watching people like go through security. So I, I just pull out my phone. I'm like, here's uh, America's finest, you know, yeah. uh, doing their best protecting right now. Protecting our borders. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like filming them. And I'm watching people like, you know, walk through, grab. I'm like, no one's getting checked here, right? And as I'm filming, one of them goes, sir. <laughs> and I go, yeah. She goes, please don't film us. Okay, you can't film. I go, was it like, I can't? I think I can. And she was like, and I just kind of did that for, I don't know, a few seconds. And I was like, you're not going to take this phone, you know? And I'm not going to delete the video. So whatever, I turn it off. He's such a fucking brat. He sounds like such a fucking cunt, isn't it? Imagine having to deal with him as a customer. Fucking hell, bro. And then I grab my and I go. And, you know, it just was like, it was it was my version of being like, hey, f you sure. for, for being a, you know. The, 
So this wasn't some one-off incident for Tom. Let's just put this into perspective. Tom's a frequent flyer. He's always on the road or flying around to look at watches or cars to add to his collection, making business deals. You know, the life of a celebrity entertainer slash entrepreneur slash wheeler and dealer. Maybe he gets that from his Love dad, who used to be an investment banker for Merrill Lynch. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> Tom doesn't just have issues with airport staff, it's also just Humble people beginnings. in general when it comes to flying. You see, you've got to understand, for a guy like Tom, going to airports and flying is one of the only times he's surrounded by people and can't escape. Think about this. Oh, true. What a great point. What a great fucking point. It's the only time he's actually surrounded by paws, as he likes to call them regular civilians that makes it that also explains why some comedians are like meet and greets <gasps> i got it there's some comedians who charge for meet and greets like brendan allegedly charges for meet and greets and there's some comedians that don't like doing any meet and greets and some of it obviously because annoying fans but i think a lot of it has to do with they don't actually like talking to regular people they have this idea that only comedians can have funny jokes and regular people don't get humor and blah, 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 blah. And they just have a bit of contempt for their audience also. Wow. This might explain everything. Right? When he's on stage in front of thousands of people, he's got a microphone in his hand and everyone just listens to him talk. There's probably no other situation in his life where he's so exposed to the everyday man in yeah, such an intimate environment. Exactly. I sat down and the guy was like, how's it going? Exactly. And I already had um, earbuds in. Mm -mm. He's like, how's it going? So I took one out. I go, what's that? <laughs> he goes, how's it going? I was like, oh, it's good. And I put it back in. Boop. And then he was like, <laughs> so I was like, what's that? He's like, oh yeah, it's gonna, it was like packed flight or whatever. And I was like, yeah, a lot of people on the flight. Put it back in. And then he, his mouth moved again, and I just went like, mm. <laughs> like, like got to be kidding me. How are you not picking up on this? I know. Yeah. You see, I'm I stopping. Know. Get out of here. Yeah, you see, it's not just poor old airport staff that get under Tom's skin. <laughs> it's just... I kind of find it funny. I'm not going to lie. He actually hates, hates, hates his fans. Deep down, like, I fucking love it, man. He fucking despises <laughs> These people pay his way. They pay his fucking salary. They help him to live a life that he lives, to put his kids through private school, to live in a nice house, to have a great life. And he despises them from the bottom of his soul. Like, I fucking love it, man. It's so funny. You can't even hide it. Just people in general who inconvenience his movement or just his thoughts in general. Remember, that comedy brain. But it isn't just him. Tom's celebrity habits have rubbed off on his hardworking comedy legend of a wife who's been grinding for years just like Tom to make it to the top. And some people just don't seem to get it. I was in first class because I earned it, okay? I've been a comic for a million years. And this next to me... I mean, Fart, yeah. Thank you. It's the same story. Like, it's dark as it's the first flight out. It's the worst. And he's the only a hole. He's open and both open. Both. And then he's like a child where he has to be watching his stupid show with his earbuds. Yeah, I don't get this, by the way, because this happened to me last week too, where it was all the way open. And <laughs> what are they complaining about? Somebody having their window open on the seat. Come on, bro, man. <laughs> we get it it can be it can be an inconvenience but is it worth like complaining about on your fucking podcast is it really that deep i know it's annoying when you're getting on the first flight out and you're tired and you want to sleep and someone's got the window open but come on come on though is it really that much of an inconvenience that it it it, 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 it warrants uh remembering and retelling on the pod many days after the fact like come on and they're watching something you're like yeah. you realize the glare yeah is making it harder to watch right? yes you doing? I almost was going to tell him. I like that phrase. I was in first class because I earned it, okay? I've been a comic for a million years. Doesn't really work though. Maybe if it was, I've been working on an oil rig for a million years, or I've been a firefighter for a million years, even I've been a nurse for a million years. But being a comic for a million years, what does it have to do with flying first class? Exactly. Is it like some natural progression? 
Hmm, maybe some of you watching can explain to me in the comments. I guess I just don't have the right attitude, huh? <laughs> That's actually something I should probably take some advice from Tom on. Let's take a closer look because maybe he posted something on Twitter that can help me out. The lowest level paws get upset as they've been trained to do when you point out they're happy to do what I'm told, servant mentality. They don't value time because their time is worthless. You are specks of shit on a washcloth and washcloths belong in the trash. <laughs> oh, jeez, mate. All the paws and losers have the same response. Oh, you are inconvenienced. Well, you should accept it. That's what me and my dumb poor family have done for generations. <laughs> this is why you're poor. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. But that tweet is funny. I'm sorry. That tweet is funny. I don't care <laughs> what you say. <laughs> the one at the bottom. All the poor and losers have the same response. Oh, you are inconvenienced. Well, you should accept it. That's what me and my dumb poor family have done for generations. <laughs> oh i'm sorry man that just makes me laugh i love a good mask off moment i love when psychos just go full-blown psycho you know me you know i've got something you got you know i've got a bit of a thing for the fucking unhinged and this is it because deep down there's a fucking rage inside of this guy like you know that bit about it on the on the on the your mum's house about tom being a serial killer that's true that comes from a true place because he has some fucking rage in him where he could legitimately run over a homeless person like and just keep and just keep on going you know you can run them over and just keep on going and sleep like a fucking baby <laughs> oh, man that is so brutal <laughs> Just saying. Anyway, I don't fully disagree with Tom here. Funnily enough, he's gone full savage, but there definitely is some truth to what he's saying. Many rich and successful people think in a different way. Perhaps they're more creative or more willing to take risks, oh, but good. maybe they that's can be good. more creative and take more risks because they have a buffer, a, a safety net exactly. effectively, exactly. or they're just more comfortable, exactly. you know, through the support of their rich parents, for example, exactly. just like Tom. And that's actually one thing we know for sure through studies and research that successful people on average attribute their success to their own hard work or ingenuity instead of circumstantial luck or just convenience, which has been shown to play a much larger role in becoming successful than hard work or ingenuity. And that's where people like Tom get this idea that their time is worth more than yours. That's why I've always un not understood that. Hey, big up us in case you appreciate it, brother. Didn't they used to say that only black people use washcloths? Or am I misremembering that? So washcloths belong in the trash is a low-key dig at black people? I've been laughing at Tom. I've been laughing with Tom this whole time. And he's been dissing me and my people. I've been giving him all these excuses. And he's actually calling me a nignog. He's telling me go back to my country. Oh my god. I've been like Samuel Jackson on fucking Django. I'd be like, no, carrying Tom at that. That's what I'm Samuel Jackson's character in Django. Oh my god. Please forgive me, Wakanda. Forgive me. Forgive me, Stevie Wonder. Forgive me. Forgive me, Elton John. Forgive me. Forgive me, Phil Collins. Forgive me. Forgive me, Simply Red. Forgive me. <gasps> Shit. <laughs> because in a sense, it is. If Tom misses a day of work so he can't podcast because he's lost his voice or whatever then his loss will be much higher than if you or me miss a day of work, probably in the tens of thousands of dollars. Now, that's a lot of money. I get where he's coming from. Time is money after all. But here's the thing. That plane wasn't going to take off any faster if he didn't have to check his bag. He's mixing issues all into one to make... Oh, I 
look at that. My words are coming back to haunt me, innit? Big up Lang Clean. Don't try to make sense of it, I go. Just have fun. Oh, my words are coming back to haunt me, innit? I told that guy watching Cute Lasagna Girl not to make sense of it because it's just psychos and here I am trying to make sense of it. I'm catching L after L after L today, innit? Jesus Christ. First, I'm defending a racist. And then I'm not seeing that I'm doing the same thing other people are doing. I'm turning into Brendan. I'm turning into Brendan Shaw in real time. Fuck. Fuck. In a couple of years, there's going to be a Reddit about me. <laughs> Make his point. And the bottom line is, Shit. this was all just ego. And he made it clear himself. He was having a go at the agent for letting the power get to her head and for her being bossy. Ironic, huh? And that's where I kind of lose Tom when he goes on these rampages. Don't get me wrong, the way he leaned into this whole situation was funny as hell. Come on, admit it. A part of you was laughing at some of those tweets and the way he kept going deep and roasting everyone. But don't be mistaken, Tom's being dead serious. This isn't some ongoing bit that he's doing like many of his fanboys want you to believe. Tom genuinely dislikes poor people and he doesn't like it when the common man or woman exactly. get in his way. Exactly. Remember earlier this year when he roasted that group of his audience who complained about him and Bert constantly going on about their expensive watches and their cars? I did a podcast with Bart, uh, it was a few weeks ago, and I think I had just <laughs> seen somebody be like, like, you know, like the podcast, sometimes they'll be like, like the podcast, really don't like when you talk about like that you got to watch or Jeez. or you guys will t you talk about like any success you've had because like I'm having a hard time so <laughs> therefore and I was like what a f loser you know like to <laughs> to read somebody going like hey uh you talking about something that's good or, or, or you know a, a success in your life it it makes me feel bad about my right. life Okay, hang on. So this is what annoys me about this whole situation. People weren't complaining about him and Bert talking about watches and cars. That's not what people were saying. Exactly. That's how Tom has muddled all of this up in his head to justify his exactly. response. It clearly got to him. Otherwise, he wouldn't have turned it into this massive thing. The issue for people, including myself, was that Tom and Bert were spending way too much time on their regular podcasts and on other podcasts as well, just talking about all the stuff they have and all the cool things they get to do all the time. No one cares if they buy expensive things. All rich celebrities do. I guarantee you, Joe Rogan has way more expensive stuff than these Muppets. But Rogan doesn't spend so much time going on and on and on about his new shiny car and how much he deserves it because he works hard. People want to be entertained on these podcasts, not constantly reminded of how awesome these guys are because they're rich and famous. Exactly. I was bothered because I just, I don't like hearing, I don't like hearing the excuses. Uh, you know, the word it would extend. I don't like hearing criticism or feedback. It also it reminds me of, uh, to me, this has a direct correlation also with uh, health and fitness. I, you know, I want to work out and then you go, yeah, but. But nah, there's a but. There's always a but. I'm yeah. tired or this is, you know, I don't feel like it today. Like there's always an excuse, right? Yeah. So I started to take fitness more seriously, I'd say in the last year, you know. And so some people notice and they go, uh, you know, congratulations or that's great. You know, keep going. Like they positive. And then you always find some people who go, uh, must be nice. Right. And you're like, what must be nice? And they're like, I mean, must be nice that you can <laughs> afford to, uh, you know, go to the gym. And like I'm like, wait, wait, wait. So right. is your position that only people with money are into fitness? Okay, here he goes again. He's completely missed the point. Before Tom got rich, he was a fat slob. He's only upgraded to a dad bod over the last couple of years after his injury, and you guessed it, after he could afford to have a personal trainer literally follow him around the world on his tours to train him. Oh. I started touring with Tom 
back on the ball hog tour when we were training together. No fucking way. No fucking way. No fucking way. No fucking way. This guy was bragging and trying to fucking gaslight people about the gym thing. And he had a personal trainer following him around the world. Not even a personal trainer in America. A personal trainer going with him. He came to England recently. He came to London recently. This personal trainer was with him here in Europe. He didn't even do it on his own. Again, it's not a bother. You can have a personal trainer. Personal trainers don't cost much anyway. Um, you can get it done. It is what it is. But he's making it sound like he actually did this all on his own. When in actuality, he had all the help needed. to. Some guy has to sacrifice his time. Yes, he's making money to follow you around the world to get you to work out. Because you can't do it on your own. Okay. I think I changed my mind. Tom's a piece of shit. I agree now. Tom's a fucking piece of shit. Tom is a fucking piece of shit, and I don't know how his fans put up with this shit. He's rich enough to afford Ozempic. He's rich enough to have the treatment, because again, he had a f serious injury. That injury was fucking crazy. He had the money available, because America, you guys don't have free healthcare. He had the money available to afford the fucking, you know, whatever the surgery needed to fix that issue. The money needed to, to rehabilitate himself. Then he had the ability to kind of get probably a nutritionist. The money to afford him to get a fucking hire, a personal trainer, to get him out to, to teach him how to fucking do dumbbell curls, and how to bench, and how to fucking squat, because he can't do it on his own right he's not even training in regular gyms he has a probably a section sent it out for him that he can go in training he flies his fucking trainer around with him around the world has him probably feeding him dinner like a fucking baby in these little like you know what, what they call them in those little uh meal kit things I can't believe I was defending. This guy's a piece of shit, man. What a piece of shit. What a condescending, egotistical, gaslighting piece of fucking shit. You've got a guy telling you how to do push-ups. You're paying his ticket. You're paying for his fucking accommodation. He's feeding you food like a fucking baby. Here comes the airplane. Put it in your fucking mouth as a grown adult to get you to work out and lose weight and you're probably on Ozempic and then you're trying to poor shame your fans for calling out your privilege instead of just being hey yeah true you know I'm, I'm really lucky I've had ability to make loads of money obviously it's for the fans that I've been able to afford this lifestyle and I've put some of that money into getting a trainer obviously it's not easy you still have to do the work but this has really helped because I don't have the motivation da, da, da. no he's the big bad boy he's the boy he's a Billy Bo he's fucking Billy Big Balls he pulled himself up by his bootstraps he did it all on his own bro bro you're flying your trainer not even He's, he's, at, he's in America. He's flying him around the world. <laughs> so imagine you're a fan of Tom and you're a fan of Burt Kreischer in your mom's house. You have to listen to these guys every week talk about airports, complain about private jets, talk about Rolexes, talk about cars and holidays. And then on top of that, you've got Tom trying to shame you if you're fat. When he was fat just last year, he's a recent skinny guy. He only got fit recently. And he's trying to now shame you for being fat. And he's also trying to make you feel bad because you don't work out. When in actuality, he has somebody to help him work out like a fucking PE teacher in school. What a cunt. What a fucking cunt. Oh my god, man. This guy's insufferable. Obnoxious, condescending piece of shit. <laughs> wow.
Wow, Tom Segura. Wow. You're a fucking piece of shit. You really are. Oh, my God. The pause, the pause. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. What a piece of shit. And like, the, and like Podcast Crin said, he only got fit because he fucking stupidly broke his arm trying to jump, which is super embarrassing. He tried to jump and he broke his arm. <laughs> he tried to do a layup and he broke his fucking arm. That's what made him, you know, get healthy. And obviously some people suggest he actually wants to get that second wife. That might also be the reason why. What a piece of shit. Personal trainer. Can't believe it, mate. I can't believe it. Let's play. He thought that would be a good idea, you know, to go out like the last quarter of the tour and, you know, train him while he was on the road. So if you're a big up um, God's note, appreciate and it. It was at that moment we realized his breaking his arm had less to do with anything other than his hubris to go for it in the first place. That was Tom fat. That was Tom unathletic. That was Tom doesn't play sports. And in his brain, he thought he had the ability to do what he tried to do. A single parent or you just work in two or three jobs to make ends meet, wouldn't it be nice to have a personal trainer follow you to work and train you in your breaks or even just to motivate you to train after cunt. work by what literally being there ready to what go? I mean, think about the relationship you're missing out on with your trainer. Working with Tom is, I mean, you, you really can't ask for anything better. What? <laughs> What's going on here? Hold on. What the fuck is going on here? Is this like a troll? Is this a troll? Please, is this a troll? Is this a troll? What the fuck is going on here? <laughs> so... The whole second wife thing is a bit of a ruse. There is no second wife. It's a second guy. Or it's another person. What the fuck is... Why is it okay he's about to cry? Is Tom fucking his trainer? <laughs> oh my god. I didn't know this was happening. Can you imagine how distraught Christina Pajinski is going to be? Can you imagine how distraught Christina is going to be? If Tom not leaves, doesn't leave her for some bimbo, like he always says on the show as, as a meme, he actually leaves her for his trainer. <laughs> Can you imagine how much that will absolutely destroy her? Okay. can't man <laughs> I mean it's oh, no nah, this can't be real this can't be real he's, he's he's in on his meme this can't be real this can't be real I don't believe this is real he's part of the he knows your mom's house humor the documentary is called I came everywhere like this has to be a meme this has to be a skit it has to be a bit there's no way this is real. There's no way this is real. I don't believe this. There's no way this is real. This has to be a skit. This has to be a fucking skit. This has to be a skit. Please, guys, this has to be a skit. The documentary is called, look, I came, it's, the clip is from a documentary called I Came Everywhere. Has to be a skit. One more time. This has to be a skit. One more time, one more time, all the way through. With your trainer. Working with Tom is, I mean, you, you really can't 
ask for anything better. <laughs> I can't, man. <laughs> I can't talk. <laughs> I'm mad. I mean, I'm it's... fucking mad. <laughs> This is... Oh, man. i got to get me a personal trainer. <laughs> Seriously. What even is this? Daddy, chill. <laughs> what the hell is even that? Anyway, so Tom's definitely losing it. I wonder how much longer until Netflix drops him. I mean, he was dropping C-bombs left, right, and center on Twitter. It probably wouldn't even matter much to him at this point anyway, and I think he kind of knows that. Look how being dropped by SNL helped Shane Gillis, and also how being... Dropped by Netflix helped Andrew Schultz. As long as these guys have their buddy Joe Rogan to keep plugging their shows and specials, they'll be fine. And like I said, these guys know that. They're uncancelable at this point, but I'm not sure what they're going to do when their fans eventually get sick of being punched down on and treated like dirty rags. I think Tom needs to get some advice from his buddy Bert on how best to travel and avoid all these inconveniences. Remember, no one travels quite like Bert does. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe so you get all my videos. Fucking hell, bro. That was so weird. I want... I'm sure that was a skit. I don't believe that was true. That has to be a skit. That has to be a fucking skit. I don't believe in the slightest. This nigga was, like, crying. What? Look at him. I can't talk. I can't talk. It's just... You know, it's like... Talk. I got no words, bro. I think I'm going to have to end it there, guys. It's half five. I need to head to the gym. I got no words.